Okay, so new definition. Let G together with the binary operation star be a group. If there exists an element A in the underlying set G such that for every element in the set G, we have that G, that element G is equal to A to the power of N for some integer in, then the element A is called a generator of the group and the group is called a cyclic group. Now if the integer n is a negative integer, then the notation a to the power of n is the inverse of a to the power of the absolute value of n. And if the group is additive, the notation a to the power of n is denoted n times a and of course recall that a to the power of 0 is the identity so let's look at an example the set of integers modulo 4 together with addition, modulo 4, is a cyclic group. So proof. Notice that 1 times the element 1 is 1. 2 times the element 1 is 1 plus 1 modulo 4, which is 2 modulo 4. 3 times the element 1 is 1 plus 1 modulo 4 plus 1 modulo 4, which is 3 modulo 4. And 4 times 1 is 1 plus itself. 4 times modulo 4, which is 4, modulo 4, and this is equivalent to 0. And so for every element g in the set of integers modulo 4, that element is n times the element 1 for some integer n and therefore the number 1 is a generator for the cyclic group consisting of the integers modulo 4 together with addition modulo 4. Now we denote the 
that a group is generated by an element A in the group using the notation angled brackets for the element is equal to the group consisting of the set G together with the binary operation star or if the operation is clear we simply show that the element A generates the underlying set G. So for example, one is a generator for the cyclic group of the integers. Now here the uh, operation of addition is implied because the integers is a group under addition but is not uh, a group under multiplication. So let's prove that this is true. For every integer n that is either greater than or equal to zero, that is for every non-negative integer n, we have that n is equal to n times the element one. For every negative integer m, we have that that integer is equal to m times one, which is the same as the absolute value of m times the additive inverse of one, which is the absolute value of m times negative one. So now we need to turn our attention back to functions for a moment. So new definition. A function, which we'll call phi from the set A into the set B is an injection or injective function if and only if every element in the domain A is mapped onto a unique element in the codomain B. That is, the function phi from the set A into the set B is an injection if and only if the implication A is not equal to B implies that phi of A is not equal to phi of B. That is, for two distinct elements, A and B, in the domain, those elements are not mapped onto the same element in the codomain B. Now a logically equivalent statement of an implication P implies Q is its contrapositive The negation of Q implies the negation of P. 
So we can prove that a function phi mapping the set A into the set B is an injection by proving that phi of A is equal to phi of B implies that the elements element A is the same as the element B. Okay, so new definition. A function phi mapping set A into the set B is a surjection or surjective function if and only if every element in the codomain B is mapped onto by at least one element in the domain A that is the function phi from the set A into the set B is a surjection if and only if, for every element B in the codomain B, there exists at least one element A in the set A, such that the element B is mapped onto by the element A. So new definition, a function phi, from the set A into the set B is a bijection or bijective function if and only if it is both an injection and a surjection now a necessary condition for a function phi from a into B to be a bijection is that the number of elements in the domain must be equal to the number of elements in the codomain. So for example, a function phi from the entire set of integers into the integers modulo k defined by phi of a is the element r where 
R is an element in the set of integers modulo k such that R is congruent to A modulo k cannot be a bijection since the cardinality of the integers modulo k is the finite number k and the cardinality of the entire set of integers is the transfinite number aleph null. It is infinite. So it is impossible for this function to be a bijection, but notice that this function is a surjection since for every number r in the set of integers modulo k, there exists at least one element a in the set of integers such that this number r is equal to phi of a. However, phi is not an injection since if the integer a is not equal to the integer b, but a is congruent to b modulo k, we still have that phi of a is equal to phi of b. And therefore, the function phi is injective, correction is surjective, but not injective. Okay, new definition. A transformation on a set X is a bijection, which we'll call phi, mapping the set back into itself. Now, if in addition, the underlying set X is finite, whoops, which means that the cardinality is an integer n, a positive integer n. Then the function phi, the bijection, is called a permutation of the underlying set X. Now a transformation is a geometric concept. Uh, the more that you study mathematics, the uh, less of a distinction you will make between algebra and geometry. One of the things I hope to accomplish in this course is to demonstrate that the branches of algebra and geometry are linked by the concepts of sets and functions, especially where those functions can be regarded as transformations.